You got it, mate. Wow, what a beautiful tent and what a lovely morning. You join us today on Ham Pool, which is on the South Cerny Club Association book. And we're fishing the method feeder. I'm going to take you through a few tips now relating to this absolutely devastating method. So first of all, I thought I'd explain what exactly a method feeder is. As you can see here, I've got a method feeder. And the first thing to notice is that the hook length is actually attached to the feeder and the hook length is very, very short. And the main principle behind a method feeder is that you create a, a parcel of food or bait around the feeder like that and the very short hook length and bait is actually buried inside that parcel of food. And as you can see there, that's the red corn that I've actually got on the baited hook. So basically that feed is cast out into the, into the swim and the ground bait dissolves away, leaving your hook bait in the middle of that parcel of food. And that's what makes it such a devastating method. It's, it's a very positive method, but one that will work really well on prolific venues like this and on commercials where you've got a good head of fish that are feeding well and with confidence. So that's the method feeder. And you've basically got two different types of method feeder to consider. You've got the feeder that I just showed you where you've got the hook length, which is fixed to this elastic system in the feeder. So that creates a fantastic bolt rig, but it also enables you to have some shock absorption if, when you do hook a fish. Now, that's a very effective method, but in many cases, it's actually banned um, because fishery managers quite rightly can be worried about the, the fish being tethered to the feeder. So if you, if you actually crack off and the feeder ends up in the water, or if the hook length is heavier than the main line. So what we've actually, what's evolved to counter that is the inline feeder, such as this Drenham version. And today I've actually set both up. I've got one on my specimen rod, which is the inline version, and on my match rod, I've got this uh, fixed method feeder. So I touched on it, but when you are fishing with a method feeder that's fixed, you need to ensure that your main line is heavier than your hook length. So obviously if you do hook a big fish that breaks you, the hook length will break before the main line. Well, this is the second bite that I've had on the method. And uh, I'm fishing it with a bit more sort of specimen style. So I'm using a two pound test curve rod and um, I'm casting around about 50 yards out and uh, this one took two pieces of red corn and uh, it feels like it might be another nice tench. Oh no, it's a bream. There we go. and bream around about three pounds. And you can see the method feeder there is run free because I've uh, set it up with that manner. So I've got a, a semi bolt rig, but as you can see, the feeder does come off. Right then, let's get him in the net and get out again. So the, the bait I'm using is, is quite big. I'm using two bits of red corn that I've hair rigged onto a size 12 hook. So there you go, there's the hook bait. I'm using a, a very short eight pound hook length that's around about 15, 20 centimetres long. And then I've got the method feeder. 
and I'm basically using a, a mixture of ground bait and pellets that's very rich in food. So what I'm trying to do is attract some, some bigger fish. So it's a bit different to the normal sort of match method feeder approach. I guess it's a little bit scaled up and I'm hoping that with this approach I might be able to catch some bigger, bigger carp as well as the tension bream. And I've also got quite a big parcel of food on the method feeder as well. Okay, let's get it back out. So I'm fishing in around about 10 or 12 foot of water and it feels like the area I'm in is actually a nice gravel bottom. There seems to be some quite big weed beds. And I wanted to fish this in the actual gravel areas of the lake so that the, the weed's not covering up my bait. And um, the other thing, because perhaps I'm more of a matchman, I've also set up a match style feeder that I'm fishing over to the right in another swim by those lilies. So it'll be interesting to see as the day progresses, which method's better, the more specimen style or the standard sort of match style. So I'm pleasure fishing today and I've decided to, be, to use two rods and that's why I've gone for two slightly different approaches. So the first one is this uh, 11 foot agility EXP feeder rod that I've matched up with a front drag agility reel. And this is very much a, a match style setup. So I've got a nice rod that will enable me to cast a feed at the distance required and also play the fish very effectively with its nice, soft, progressive action. And I've also obviously got the quiver tips that I can use to vary to the conditions and the distance that I'm casting. The other rod that I've selected is a, a specimen rod. This is a new Agility EXP specimen rod with a test curve of two pounds. And I've set this up because I wanted to be able to cast this further out, target some bigger fish maybe, um, and probably not cast as often. So I've used a, a much bigger method feeder. In this case, it's a 25 gram Drennan inline feeder. And I've matched that up with a, a 40 size Agility free spool reel. Uh, ag again, that balances the rod nicely. Uh, it, it helps me with the increased distance and it also means I can use the free, full, free spool facility um, because I'm gonna leave it out and wait for a bite whilst I'm fishing with the other rod. Obviously the two pound test curb enables me to cast the heavier feeder when loaded with ground bait um, a long distance if required. And also it will be more than man enough to hook any bonus fish that I cook, did hook maybe a, a double figure carp for example. So that's the two different approaches that I'm using today. So let's have a look at the actual terminal tackle that we're using for the method feeder. On my uh, 11 foot match style feeder, I've gone for a six pound Charlie XT main line, which is very strong. And that's something that you need to bear in mind. You need a strong, robust feeder line when you're fishing like this. And I've kept it strong and tough with my hook length and I'm actually using a four pound version of the same line, which is diameter 0.20. The hooks I'm using are um, Camasan B911s in a size 16 or a size 14. And uh, I also like these uh, Prodigy Method hair rigs as well for speed. So I'll often use them when I want to rig up lots of different feeders. And uh, obviously if I, if I need to change a hook, I can change a hook very quickly rather than tying one by hand. On the big rod, I'm using a 10 pound XT and I'm actually using the six pound as a hook length. And to balance it up, I've used a bigger and a stronger hook. So I've gone for a size 12 uh, carp method hook um, because obviously with the two pound test curve rod, I need a, a slightly bigger hook and a stronger hook so that I'm not pulling out of the fish. So that's um, basically the uh, hooks and hook lengths and reel lines. Um, and on the feeders, I, as I mentioned, I've used a variety of different sizes of the Drennan inline feeders and 
these Cobra elasticated feeders. So as I mentioned, the method feed is such a devastating tactic when you're fishing a lake like this. And I think the great thing about it is you can actually catch a variety of different fish. So bigger bream, tench are going are gonna to be caught very easily and also more specimen carp. Um, so with that in mind, you want to carry some different baits to target different fish. And another great feature about a method feeder is um, by just simply attaching a snap swivel to your main line, you can change the method feeder that you're using very quickly and I'll actually have uh, various different method feeders set up with different baits like this. So you can see this one's got um, two dead red maggots which would be perfect for fishing for smaller carp, bream and tench. Um, I've got one there with a single piece of corn which is just absolutely deadly or proving deadly today for uh, the tench and bream. And I've also got one there with a soft pellet on, which can be absolutely fantastic when you're catching match-sized carp. So that's the great thing about the method, you can dictate the bait to the type of fish that you want to catch. Okay, so let's have a look at the ground bait that we're using for the method today. Um, the ground bait that I'm using is a very coarse ground bait that's rich with lots of different food and particles. Because it's uh, such a prolific lake, with specimen fish. I wanted to be able to attract the fish but also hold them in the swim. So that's why I've gone for this very rich ground bait. On a colder day or on a venue where you're targeting smaller fish, you probably need to tailor your ground bait to include less feed content than this. So the actual mix I'm using is um, about 70% of this specimen carp ground bait. Um, and I've mixed in about 30% of this krill which I think is a great attractant for when you're fishing on the method feeder. And it also gives me a good consistency, which is really important when you're fishing the method. You don't want the ground bait to clog too much. You want it to break down um, and release from the feeder. Uh, within that mix, I've added some micro pellets that I've dampened down. And I've also added some six mil halibut pellets as well, again, to try and bulk out the feed as much as possible. And I'm not using a, a method mould, which can be a really good thing to use for creating a nice consistent food parcel, simply because I want to actually pack that feeder with more feed. So I'm moulding it by hand. Even though it's um, a very coarse mix, you'll see that it's, it's still quite fluffy and certainly mixed consistently, which I think is very important as well to help achieve that correct method mix. And to do that, I, I've actually run that ground bait through this ground bait riddle. It's a bit of a hassle to do it, but it really does help you create a nice fluffy mix that will work effectively. Okay, so I'll actually show you in detail how I'm actually baiting up one of the method feeders. And I'm going to start by just hair rigging a piece of corn. I think hair rigging is such an effective way of mounting your bait not only when you're method feeder fishing, but when you're fishing with these kind of bigger baits, such as corn and pellets. So basically I've, I've threaded the, the corn onto the hair by using this baiting needle. And I'm just gonna put a bait stop behind that to keep it in place. So I've got the, the corn very nicely secured on the hair and I've got the hook I don't know, about a centimetre above, above the corn. And now I'm going to mould the ground bait onto the feeder. So I'm going to take a small amount first and I'm going to press that into the main frame of the, of the feeder. So that's my initial amount. And you need to think about how firmly you compress that onto the feeder. Obviously, if you want the bait to disperse very quickly, you don't want to actually compress it too much. If you want it to dissolve a bit slower, then I, like today, I'm actually moulding that on quite firmly to start with. Then I'm going to fold my hook bait into the feeder and I'm going to finish it off by adding another layer of ground bait. And in this case, I'm not going to mould that too firmly. So the idea being that the, that top layer will dissolve quickly, leaving my bait 
and the inner core a little bit longer. So today I probably wouldn't leave that in for more than 10 minutes so that I'm gradually building the swim up by adding more and more ground bait. On another day, you know, you might want to leave it in for longer or obviously if the fish are very active, then you can be casting more regularly. But it's definitely worth thinking about how hard you compress the ground bait and how often you cast. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, my tactics today were to fish two rods. And I've got my specimen rod fishing around about 60 yards straight out in front. And on my lighter feeder rod, I'm casting over towards these lilies. And I just thought I'd mention something about casting with a method feeder. Um, the first thing to say is on this rod, I've actually clipped up. So I've clipped up the distance. So that ensures that I'm dropping the feeder at the same distance every time. Obviously, if I did hook a big fish, uh, the stretch in the line should give me enough time to get the clip off so I can play the fish on the drag or back wind. But casting is really important with the method. You need to be casting very accurately, or certainly as accurately as possible. So I'm also lining up with a far bank marker, in this case a tree, and the cast itself uh, needs to be smooth um, but deliberate. And I'm going to cast it to the clip and feather the feeder into the water. So here goes. So just as the feeder hits the water, I feather it on the clip and you'll notice that I'm just lowering the feeder down without moving it. The last thing I want to do now is move the feeder away because the ground bait's already starting to break down and I'll start moving the ground bait, the feeder away from the ground bait. So once the feeder's settled, I'll just very gently place the rod on the rest. Now you'll notice that the angle uh, between the quiver tip and where I'm casting is actually very slight. And that goes against what most people would do when they're feeder fishing or ledgering. But the method's such a pos positive way of fishing, the bites are obviously very, very good. So I don't really need that angle on the quiver tip. And the other thing is obviously by being able to drop it straight on the rest, it means I'm not moving the feeder at all. So all I'll do now is just gradually tighten up to the feeder without moving the feeder away. And another thing to mention about the method is you'll get lots of taps and indications from the fish. And obviously the fish are coming in confidently onto that method. Um, the best thing to do is just completely ignore those. Wait for a positive pull round or drop back and then just simply pick the rod up and you should be into the fish. Basically, because it's a bolt rig, the fish has hooked itself. Great, there's another lovely bream. I think this and the other fish I've caught today prove what an effective method the method feeder is. I've really enjoyed the session today at Ham's Pool. I hope the tips we've showed you help you next time you're out when you're method feeder fishing. Thanks for watching.